been playing some mobile games lately. It's like a constant quest, though, to have fun with dealing with the touchscreen. So I don't like that. So I've tried, like, the sh clip-on shoulder buttons. Those are pretty good. Uh, PlayStation 4 controller when it's available. That's great. And otherwise, I've tried some of these mobile controllers. And a lot of these have trouble. Like, the hardware is a fail for one or whatever reason. Software is non-existent or doesn't work. Um, this one does. This is the Game Sir G6. I'm not saying run out and buy anything because, I don't know, could break. It's been working fine for me for now, but could break you know, tomorrow or in, in a minute. Who knows? The software is super buggy and clunky, but it does work. Been having a lot of fun with this, but I can't leave anything alone. So I want to take this apart and use the brain from the G6 in here. And this thing is confusing. I found this on Amazon, $4.99 shipped. On eBay, $5.99 shipped. It's for Android, and I can't imagine that it will work. Uh, but then again, who knows? It's Android. You can, like, hook up a banana and play with that. So this could be just fine. Uh, we have the full controls. Shoulder buttons. All four. Uh, all the regular controls otherwise. And this nunchuck. I've seen some variations of this for, like, 40, 50, 60 bucks. Same color with some of those, black color and, and others. And they all have no nunchucks. So this is like really a cool feature for me. And it's also spring loaded. I think there's a switch back here. If not, I'm gonna put one. That'll be for like reloading or aim down the sights. It's even more intuitive, I think, for aim down the sights. And in doing something like this, like this project, I don't sit down and, and try to mess with these because I want to make the best, coolest thing on the planet. It's just, like, I'm curious. I want to see. I want to tear this apart and see what's going on in there. Like, how hard is it to wire existing buttons uh, to the board of this? It'd be kind of cool to figure that out. If I can find some room. Like, I'm, I'm interested in the project itself, you know. And I'm also, I want to see if it's fun to play with an iPhone or an iPad uh, like this. Not gonna be like the most convenient way to do it, but it, it could be pretty fun. So now to open these things up and uh, see what's up with it.
finding room for this little guy is kind of tricky. I was wanting to put it in the pistol grip, but it's too wide. And I thought about putting it here, but we have all these buttons and the original board will be nice and easy just to fit right back in there. And I can use all the original buttons. The other grip, the nunchuck, it's also a no-go, except for this slide. I was thinking maybe I can put it in like this little bridge. Um, problem is too much hardware on this side. We have a metal plate that goes there, a couple other things, and the spring that goes right on top. So that's a no-go on this side also. But I think I found a spot here on this side. I can put this right underneath uh, the phone mount. Should fit if I can push it all the way down. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run with that. I'm kind of working out the wiring for this. This controller has nine inputs plus uh, L3. The gun controller has 18 inputs, plus I want to add one on the right side for reload and maybe a couple in the nunchuck. So to do that, I want to take advantage of a feature in the software where you can set multiple button presses to be one on-screen button. So you can combine, I can combine like up and down since you would never really be able to press those simultaneously. So up and down will become a new button input. Same thing with left and right. Then I can designate also C and Z to be only combination buttons. So C will be combined with up, C with left, C with down, C with right, C with Z even. And then same thing for Z. And doing that, that should give me all together, I think 20 uh, buttons to play with. An actual wiring part. Something like this. This is what I've come up with anyway. I, I kind of had a hard time figuring this out <laughs> somehow. So if you have a better way, an easier way, let me know. So A, this is the actual button. Uh, connect to the board, connect to the board, and ground. So A and B connected to ground. Then if I connect this other side to C, I need to add one extra pin to C, connected to ground. So now if I close B, B is now um, acting as an input to ground. If I close A, A goes to ground, that's great. If I close C, both A and B go to ground. And I tried a couple other different ways to do it and every time I would have accidental inputs in different ways. So this is like the best way that I can come up with for now, where everything works as it should. B works by itself, A works by itself, but they can work uh, together with C. Yeah, so if you really, if you do have a better way, let me know, because I, been scratching my head like an idiot trying to figure this out and that's that's what i that's what i got so i need to add a third pin to the combination button this is the best idea i have so far i tried a few things and this seems to be the winner so i split the pad now i have one two and three contact pads there um i filed that down afterwards because it was a, a little bit too much variation in the height and to help out with the button feel, I added a little bit of copper tape to the bottom of the pad. And in my testing, that seems to feel just right. So we'll see. 